Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be planting up my front borders here with some spring bulbs. So these borders are basically rose borders mixed in with summer bedding plants. Now later in the year I will be planting a couple of laburnum trees to replace those two castor oil plants at the top there. And I'll also be replacing this castor oil plant with a, uh, a shrub at some point. But basically it's rose beds and in between the roses are seasonal bedding. So I've got rid of most of the summer bedding now as it's gone over, it's, it's October now, the frosts are coming in. We've still got some flowers as you can see on the roses and some of the summer bedding is still going so I've left that because the uh, zonal pelagoniums they can take one, about minus one, minus two and they're normally fine so I've left them. But otherwise I've planted up the winter bedding but as well as this I'd like to have some spring flowers that are perennial so I'd like to keep replanting them. So what I'm going to be putting in here are crocus bulbs. So I really like crocuses, they're really early flowering plants, they flower probably about February, March time, depending on how cold the winter is, sometimes they're as late as, as March. But they just give you that nice bright colour when nothing else is growing. And they seem to do really well here in Scotland as well. So I've gone for a giant variety, uh, which is the ones I prefer. So they've got 100 bulbs of crocuses. This is, as I say, with the giant variety, which uh, I think I find they're just a little bit more showy. So I'm going to plant these around. Now eventually I'm also going to plant some underneath the two laburnum trees which will be at the front. I'll probably plant some underneath this uh, cord line as well once it gets taller. But for now I'm just going to plant them around the rose shrubs. So the idea is the roses won't have any leaves over winter, they'll be cut back quite hard with winter pruning. So there'll be quite an empty patch where the roses are currently. The spring flowers will just give a bit of colour there. I'm not going to plant any winter or autumn bedding right next to the roses because when the autumn bedding needs to go in it's still green with the roses so I can't put winter bedding under there so that's why I've gone for the spring bulbs and the rest of the spaces in the beds I'm going to plant up with seasonal bedding so there's not going to be any bulbs planted in there so the idea is around the base of each rose I'm going to plant the spring bulbs so in this video there's five roses so I'm going to plant it up around the five roses eventually this is going to be a rose as well for now it's just a daily it's just, just short term so in the future I'll be planting up a lot more crocuses but in this video what I'll be doing is planting up 100 crocuses in the front garden and then I also have some imperial fritillaries. Now the imperial fritillaries will be going in my tropical style bed. They're a very tropical looking flower and they come up and there'll be a few challenges trying to find a space for these to grow. So I'm just going to go ahead now, start planting up these and I'll show you the process I'll go through to plant these up. So when it comes to planting up the crocuses what I need to do here because I've got lots of mulch is clear away the mulch so I can get to the bare soil. What I've then done is I've laid 20 bulbs out because I've got 100 bulbs, 5 roses, so every rose needs about 20 bulbs. I've then just kind of put them in a nice pattern around, the, it's basically I've done two circles, um, but it looks just like they're scattered. I just want to make sure they're all evenly spaced, each plant has plenty of space around it. Now crocuses do particularly well in Scotland, so these all clump up really quickly. Every year these all could double in the number of bulbs they have, they'll basically produce little baby bulbs. And next spring, There'll be a nice covering of flowers around here, quite sparse, but there'll be quite a few flowers. Then two or three years time, this will be absolutely com absolutely crammed with crocus flowers. Because as I say, it seems to do quite well here in Scotland. This will be absolutely crammed with crocus flowers within two or three years. So that whole area will be nice and full of crocuses. When it does ever become too full, what I'll do is I'll dig these back up again um, in late spring and I'll scatter them elsewhere in the garden. But for now, I'm trying to bulk, bulk up my numbers, so I'm trying to plant them more where they are at the moment. So when it comes to planting depth, um, crocuses don't need to be too deep, they're quite small bulbs, but they need to be buried deep, buried deep enough that they're not going to get damaged by frost or get damaged by the wind. So I'll be planting these about three or four times deeper than the actual size of the bulb, so probably about five or ten centimetres. And it's quite easy to do with this, I just need to put the trowel in, make a little bit of space and pop the bulb in. Now ideally with crocuses you plant the right way up, you can kind of tell um, depending on the bulb, sometimes they have a little bit of material at the top, a bit like string, which tells you the top. If they don't have that, it tends to be there's a little circle in the bottom, you can just see there. That circle is where the new roots will appear from, so that needs to be down, and the pointed section is usually the top, so that needs to be up. But as I say, it doesn't matter too much, because when it comes to crocus bulbs, and most small bulbs actually, if you plant them the wrong way up, they'll normally just send the shoots in the right direction and they'll be fine anyway. But if you can, plant them the right way up, is that will be ideal. So that's all the crocus bulbs now planted up. So you'll probably see them in full bloom at the end of this video, which will probably be about March, April time, depending on the weather this, this coming winter. And I hopefully be, you'll be able to show you how they come up and uh, hopefully they'll come out in a nice pattern with plenty of space between them. So the next thing I'm going to be planting up is um, Imperial Fritillarias in this bed here. So this is my tropical star bed. 
basically I've got tropical looking plants like bananas and gingers but they're all hardy down at the root level. Now the problem with these plants is although they're hardy at the root level they take a very long time to get growing in spring so there's pretty much nothing on this site probably right through until May or June it's pretty much going to be bare ground so I want to have something to give a little bit of colour a bit of interest in the springtime now I could put loads of crocus bulbs in here but the problem is a lot of these plants need additional mulch and I'll need to mulch them so deeply that the crocus bulbs will grow, struggle to grow through so there's certainly a few spots around the edges that maybe next year I'll put some crocus bulbs in or snowdrops or maybe winter aconite something that's really early flowering in spring that will grow and have its life cycle before these come up but I'll do that next year so this year I'm going to put the, the imperial fritillaries in so the uh, imperial Imperial fritillary come from a bulb that's like this, a really large bulb. They're very interesting plants, they look very tropical, um, very unusual flowers, but they, they are hardy. But they tend to be less hardy than the crocus, so they need to be planted a lot deeper. So I'll be planting these bulbs about 20 or 30 centimetres deep. But the challenge I'm going to have in this bed is finding a good place to plant them. I need to take into consideration what will be growing at the time of year when this is flowering. So this will start growing probably March time, it will flower probably around May or June. In warmer climates it probably flowers a lot earlier. In here in Scotland it's more of a, a late spring early summer flower. So I need to find a spot where it's not going to get smothered by anything else but there's going to be space for it to grow. So I need to find someone that's, say, that's got space. So when it comes to banana plants they'll be heavily mulched with uh, material so I don't want to plant them right next to a banana plant. I don't want them near some of these other plants like the begonias here or the uh, Oxalis triangularis because these plants might start coming up earlier in spring and they'll be fighting for space. So what I'm going to look for is probably where these ricinus plants are at the moment. I'm going to plant right next to their roots. These plants are not frost hardy. They're just annuals that I put in this bed just to bulk up the, the amount of planting until next year because come next year the bananas will be so big and the, the hardy gingers will be so big. They don't actually need any additional annuals to bulk up the bed. So these all will be gone. So basically where these are planted it's roughly where I'm going to plant the six fertility plants. So it's now several months later, it's actually the middle of March. Crocuses are just starting to come into their full bloom now. Now it's hard to time them perfectly to get them on camera when they're in their full bloom. The reason being when the sun comes around, this bed in the right tends to be in the shade a lot. And particularly the ones at the end, they tend to be in the shade behind the hedges until about 11 o'clock in the morning. So the ones at this end are in full bloom, the ones further along and to the right, they're not quite in full bloom yet and they're still just starting to come up. But they're looking quite good. Also the spring bedding is looking good. I don't think I mentioned it earlier in this. Is this video much but I've done a previous video about that and the all the um, pansies are looking good also the wallflowers as well which when you saw them next to the crocus planting previously was really quite small plants these are nice big bushy plants I've actually fed them with tomato feed recently to help them with the flowering and they're just starting to develop their flower buds there so the extra phosphorus and potassium from the tomato feed will just help them have extra large showy flowers but the main star of the show in this video is the crocuses now this is the one that I actually showed you me planted them up closely and as you can see most of them are up now there's still a few more to emerge you can see this this one down here a couple towards at the back but all the leaves are up anyway there's a nice spread and they're actually surprising how close to look together already and in a few years this will be really dense and it'll just be absolutely covered in crocus flowers in fact you won't even see the ground all you'll be able to see is the crocus flowers so these are the giant ones as I was talking about before my hands aren't very good for scale because I'm six foot five but these are really large blossoms compared with normal crocus flowers what I'll do now is I'll pick one of the, the smaller wild varieties of crocus I've got in my garden and show you the size comparison of these so this is one of the smaller more usual size um, crocuses for comparison you can see the size of it there and next to the other ones they're just so much bigger and so much more showy so I much prefer these larger ones and uh, even the the pollen, the anthers and the stamen in the middle are, are nice and showy with the yellow so that even adds to the attraction. Now these are quite nice purple ones, I might try and get some striped ones in the future. I really do like the look of the striped varieties. Uh, there's a little bit of striping on some of these but these are just generally that plain old purple one. Um, but some of the striped ones are quite nice. So moving along, you can see this one's a bit further behind because the shade from the, uh, the hedge is still on this until a bit later in the day. And this one at the end is even further behind and same with the ones on the right here. There's loads of crocuses coming up. You can see all the leaves so you can see where they're all going to be but they're just not in flower yet because they don't get as much sun so the ground doesn't warm up as much and so they're a bit later. And then where I had my dahlia previously, I put in a new rose now but I didn't manage to plant that up because it was too late in the year. And then this one as well, although it's quite far back, that hedge over there actually casts a lot of shade until later in the day. So these are only just coming up, but you can see there's a nice spread of crocuses. There's loads of them coming up, so this will be covered in flowers soon. And what I'll do is I'll probably take some photos 
of these later in the year when they're all fully up so you can get the impact I just wanted to show you them now because if there's a storm or a really hard frost they could be damaged so I wanted to get ahead and get some nice videos of them so that's pretty much it for this part of the video I'll now show you my imperial fritillarias which is just coming up and uh, I probably won't show you them fully flowering in this video otherwise the video will be too long and I'll have to wait until May or June until I publish it but I'll at least show you them as they're coming up so this is a tropical bed that I showed you previously in the video as you can see one of the problems with a, a tropical bed where you just have herbaceous tropicals where they're root hardy but the top half isn't hardy is in the winter there's absolutely nothing to see and the whole thing dies back to the ground so it looks pretty bare at the moment there's a lot of mulch I've added to the bed to try and keep the roots insulated and I've added some insulation towers to keep the stems of the banana insulated which is why it looks so strange but I'll show you the imperial fritillarias areas now they're just starting to shoot you can see one here they're all at various stages but the one that's come on the most I would say is this one over here and the leaves are just starting to open up so these will be looking really good in a few weeks time and I'll give you guys an update as I say around about May June time when these are fully flowering they should look nice in this bed around that time I'll be unwrapping my other plants because the frost can be as late as June here in Scotland most of this bed will stay wrapped up until about May or June time and so when I show you the update of these fully flowering everything should be unwrapped but everything will just be starting to grow out the ground so it'll still look quite bare and the fritillary areas will be on their own getting all the, the uh, attention they deserve as the flowering just as the flowering finishes the warmer weather should arrive the other tropicals should kick into growth and then they'll be kind of out competed and smothered by all the nice tropical foliage that comes up so I'll also try and put some other spring bulbs in here at some point now there was a lot of um, snowdrops in this area and crocuses which are just naturally in the ground so I've just left them these aren't flowering much because they've been disturbed the ones that haven't been disturbed are flowering nicely so this area will be a carpet of snowdrops in a few years time once the snowdrops have got a bit more established and what I'll probably do is put a lot more spring bulbs in so I've got a bit more winter interest and then I'll have some more year-round interest in this bed because at the moment it's really just the summer bed and then most of winter it's completely bare only evergreen plant that stays in this bed really is the Tracicarpus palm and then I've got a Xanthodesia which survives down to about minus three with the foliage so that looks good until about December until the hard frosts arrive. So that's about it from this video. Let's say I'll see you guys in May or June when I do an update on the Fritillaria. That's just a quick update on my spring bulbs in my front garden.